Episode 20 of Outlander Cast is brought to you by the Tag Your It Etsy shop. From Outlander inspired necklaces and rings to custom designs for birthdays, Mother's Days, or any occasion, every piece is created by Dawn, one letter at a time, so that each piece is one of a kind. Please take the time to visit Dawn at www.tagyourit.biz, that's B I Z. Tell her Mary and Blake sent you, and use the coupon code OUTLANDERCAST15 for 15% off any purchase. As always, tag your mama, tag your pet, tag your it. Whatever it is. I don't understand it, I bet. Not yet. But I trust you. I trust your word. Your heart. I trust there is a, a truth between us. Welcome to OutlanderCast with Mary and Blake. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Outlander on Stars. Is it bad that I'm like dancing still to that opening song? I'm swaying here in my little chair in my recording studio. Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Mary Larson, <laughs> and I want to be a druid dancer. <laughs> it never gets old. No, it no. It never gets old. Here I am swaying, pretending I'm holding a flashlight. Keep swaying. Just keep doing it. The music's done. <laughs> the moment has passed. The sun has risen. My name's Blake, and I hate to admit this. What? I hate it. You want to dance too? No, no. Oh my God, can we have if matching admit, costumes? If I could admit that over this, yeah. I would do it. You want to know what it is? What are you ready to admit? <sighs> I'm so freaking solidly on the Jamie train. Welcome aboard. Oh welcome, my God. welcome. I'm so on the J- Jamie train. It, it hurts. Oh, wow. You are Team Jamie finally. The, the, it's only taken 11 episodes. Team Jamie. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh my God. Like, wow. Woo. Well, we will have to delve into this further Woo. as to what has changed your heart. Man, it got me hot thinking about it. Good. Wow. Welcome. Man. Holy crap. That was that was something. Well, this was episode 11. Yes, it was. Titled The Devil's Mark. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about what our kilts rating is. So out of five kilts, how many kilts would you give this episode? Well, I got to say, my girl, Jennifer Dane on Facebook put it perfectly. She said, four and a half kilts with a splash of whiskey. Wow. And you know, Jennifer, you're 100% right, girl. That This episode was four and a half kilts easily. And it was so good, it was with a splash of whiskey. It's just, just, just that little bit more. God, I wish I could have whiskey. I'm so pregnant. <laughs> I wish I had a splash of whiskey. That was it was an exceptional episode. It, it, it wasn't. It wasn't the Garrison Commander for me. Okay. It w- it was very close. It was it was like, it was that one little step below, and the, the one little step below for me was the sex scene. The oh. sex scene ruined it. Oh, well, it did not ruin it for me. Well, it, 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 <laughs> the problem that I had was it's just that it seems. It it seemed like it was just thrown in there, like oh okay, we're gonna have like, even we're just gonna have se- well they didn't have sex, but like we're just gonna I'm gonna pleasure you, and they're putting it in there just to put it in there, and, and I I it didn't help the story. It, it th- that's what I'm finding with the show so far. They're just putting stuff in there just because they can. Uh, and had that not been in there, had it been just Jamie holding, like do you remember? In the season finale, when they're at the top of the ridge and they're just looking at each other, caressing each other's hands. Yes. That is so much more romantic and so much more loving than, oh, hey, let me do this to you while I look at you. I, I just, it, it, it didn't do it for me. I didn't like it. Oh. So that brought it down a notch for me. Other, other than that, this was almost the perfect Outlander episode. Wow. It was almost perfect. It's so funny to think that a sex scene is what brought it down from being perfect for you. I know. Trust me. I, and I hate to admit that, too, especially when it involves Claire. There's nothing wrong with that. But 
I just, it didn't work for me. I don't know, kid. What do you got? How about you? Well, What's... see, I didn't see it as gratuitous sex. Okay. I saw it as love. Once again, these two characters have not said the L word. Drives me crazy. Drives me crazy. But this was another way for him to proclaim his love to her. Um, even though last week I said I was giving it a 4.9 because I missed some Tobias, mm -hmm. this episode did not have any Tobias, but it had a heck of a lot of other things. This is a five kilt, in my opinion. This is a straight up five kilt for five. you. Five. Yes. I loved it, loved it, loved it. This is one of the best episodes of TV you've ever seen. Yeah. Really? I, yep. I have been looking forward to this scene, not even the scene, this whole kind of like chain of events. That's what I'd like to call it. Mm -hmm. I've been looking forward to this since I heard the show is being made. I am so pumped. People, who other book readers had asked me, you know, what are you most looking forward to? And I said, starting right at the trial, man. Yeah. Because that's when it gets real. And I've been telling Blake all along, especially for the first half of this season, I said, you know what? You just have to keep plugging away at it because things really pick up. And boy, did they. <laughs> so um, in addition to my five kilts, there were a couple other cute Facebook responses about how people would have rated this episode. Eli Moon said five red shoes to Galus's performance. <laughs> oh, seeing those red shoes was fantastic. I again. know. They made a comeback. I was Love so them. happy. Oh. McZappos. <laughs> <laughs> Laura Vukies gave it 4.5 kilts only because um, she thinks that they could have shaved off a few minutes off the trial to give Jamie and Claire more time at the mm, end. Laura. Uh, don't judge. Don't I'm not, judge. I'm not judging. I'm not judging. But I, I think you, you needed enough time for the trial to make it have that kind of weight that it had. And Yolanda Hawkins said five kilts and on your feet, soldier. Oh, Love so it. Cute. So, so cute. By the way. Can I just say this? I'm going to say it. I'm going to come up front because everybody knows it's coming. Okay. I don't even know what's coming. I love being right. I love <sighs> being right. I, I, oh, my God. Do you know how many outlandish theories of the week were right in these past two episodes for me? Okay. How about we just talk about this episode? How no, no, many... no, 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 no. Let me enjoy, let me enjoy my, my, the, the pleasure of all of this. All right. Okay. We had leg hair. Going to Father Bane and making all this stuff happen. Bam! Just like that. A winner! All right. So Leary is a little snitch. Le Leary made it happen. And then, um, I, and then I got Jamie coming to rescue. Bam! Just like that. A winner! And then I got Claire telling him she's from the future. Bam! Made and you missed happen. another big one that you you already proclaimed. Wait, what? Which one was that? Galus. Oh, Galus was a traveler. Bam. Look at you. <laughs> Four. You know what? You know what? I'm gonna play it again. I'm so good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm a winner. laughs> oh, let me bask in the glory that is. I'm very my proud of you. My outlandish theories of the week. I'm proud of you. Oh my god, that's good stuff. Well. Now that you've been able to bask, let's go over the recap of this amazingly epic episode. Oh, God. This, oof. I'm still, I'm still, uh, my heart's a flutter from all this still. All right. All right. Here we go. Let's get into the recap. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful episode, and it starts off with pretty much a painting of a sky. Oh my god, what a great scene, seeing all the birds going in and out. Now, obviously, of course, now knowing that it was being referenced you know, by Claire, and how she see, saw the birds in Brighton and everything. I, oh my god, really beautiful. Absolutely. I, I really love what they're doing with these opening scenes now, because before it was just kind of like a still shot. Uh, of a map or a cat eating or whatever but now it's some guy loading the gun or putting the kilt on or the birds f you know flying through the sky subtle references to what's about to happen love it and it's like action you know i like that a lot yeah a lot of movement so speaking of movement these two ladies who are now can you know pretty much convicted of being witches but uh they're getting thrown into the thieves hole Get really thrown. I mean, like, just dropped. Ouch, <laughs> Charlie. Dropped, That's dropped all like I could a bad say. habit. Seriously, what a hole. Wow. Like a rocky, scary hole filled with rats. You're freezing. Oh, and don't forget, Galus is pregnant. Whatever. Throw her in. We don't know. We don't care. We think she's a witch. Poor Galus, though. Okay. 
she thinks that Dougal's going to come save her. Oh, she's in for a freaking sad, sad mistake. I mean, a, a rude awakening is in Galus's future with Dougal. And Claire's sitting there being like, why the heck am I stuck with you? Even if you're not a witch, you killed your husband. You probably had something to do with Dougal's wife. By the way, he's not coming for you because Colm sent Dougal and my husband away. We are screwed. <laughs> okay? And then Galus is like, come cuddle. <laughs> Really? That is not what I feel like doing. You are the reason I'm here right now. WTF, mate. <laughs> I'm stuck in a cold hole, and you want me to cuddle with you? Ain't no cuddling happening here. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Good Lord. So oh. after a very cold night, sleepless night, poor Claire. Come she was cuddle. shivering. <laughs> That's what she pretty much wanted. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't keep when, going. When uh, Claire was shivering like that, brought back some memories of me from uh, earlier this week when my fever came back. Ugh. I've been sick forever, guys. I've had – I've really been sick for like a month. It's because I'm pregnant and I can't take good medicine. Anything. <laughs> Yeah, I really could use some whiskey. Um, so I'm watching, I'm watching Claire shiver down to her bones. And I was like, oh, my God, that looks just like me. Except I wasn't in a thieves hole, stuck next to Galus. Accused having, being a witch. Yeah, yeah. I just was having fevers. But, oh, that poor thing. You could just feel how uncomfortable she was. <laughs> so um, the women are woken up and brought into the streets. And they get to see a uh, maypole. A maypole being erected so kids can run around with ribbons oh, and everything. Oh, oh, okay. And by a maypole, I'm kidding. Uh, it is not a maypole. That is where <laughs> they are going to be burned at the stake. All right. So uh, Claire, of course, says that she has some knowledge of what happens at witch trials. Of course she would. Yeah. Of course she would. So she knows what's going on. She, she sees all these crazy mobs of people and, you know, throughout this whole trial, I was sitting here really battling because – God, Ned did such a good job. Everyone did such a good job. But people just like to watch people fail. Like, you think about how much trash TV there is. This is like Jerry Springer in real life. This is, you know, I uh, I had to stay home because I've been sick. There's nothing on TV during midday. And that's what these people's lives are like. There's nothing to do. Maybe they could shovel hay. Or they can go watch two girls be told they're witches. And they get to watch, you know, pretty much shit hit the fan. <laughs> And they're having a blast. And they just want to see girls burn. They want to see someone go down for they, what's happening. They don't care anymore. No. You know, so I just loved all these people that came up and were like, yeah, burn, you're a witch. Like, <laughs> that's pretty much the audience members that you see of well, these daytime talk shows. That, that kind of speaks to the mob mentality almost. Just, yes. You, you get caught up in the moment of okay, burn, baby, burn. Yeah, uh, and, and I don't care what happens. I don't care how inhumane it might be or whatever the cost is. Never mind the little, if any, evidence that was there for these people. Oh, yeah, burn. Just just put – let's kill some people. You know Why who not? saves the day? Ned. Oh, my gosh. What an amazing entrance. Good reveal. So, so smart. Um, I love his doily tie. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever that was, you could tell he was like, oh, I got to go be fancy today. <laughs> I need to wear my doily tie. Um, it, and I like this, too, because it, when, the, when the doors opened, it was a white light. And you don't know who it is at first, but then you realize it's 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 Ned Gowan, and yes. he's let me in. I got to get in here, and and it, I liked it too because Claire was saying there were no familiar faces. There were no familiar faces. None. No, none. Just really Zero. cranky, bad haired L- people. A lot of bad, angry Scotsmen and Scotswomen. But then Ned Gowan shows up, and I got to tell you, as a viewer. I had that sense of relief. I had that, oh my God, finally. Your okay. smart friend is here. I know. <laughs> you know how that is when you're in like a lot of trouble and then it's like your smart friend comes and you're like, oh, thank God. <laughs> I don't thank have to do this. God. <laughs> so Ned, of course, comes down and Colm didn't know this. Now, you last week had been saying that Colm could possibly be saving Claire. That, yeah, that I because said he of was his one, power. He was one of two people that could save Claire. Now, my official outlandish theory of the week, again, was Jamie doing it. Yeah, but even Claire tried to use that name to her advantage earlier. She was like, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm Jamie Fraser's wife. I'm related to the Laird column. And the guy's like, yeah, I mean, I'm King Arthur. <laughs> yeah, right, bro. No <laughs> yeah, problem. good for you. Um, but yeah, no, I, I thought it might have been Colm, and I am surprised to know that Colm wouldn't want Ned Gowan there, and Colm may be behind her getting arrested. 
We don't know. We don't know. But Ned's reaction to Colm, well, the suggestion of Colm, it was a little disconcerting, especially if you're Claire. You know, the other thing that you need to keep in mind is here's this mob who believes in witchcraft, who believes in fairies taking your babies. And Colm is just trying to keep the peace with his people. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to stir up anything with Jacobites. And if I were Colm, I'd kind of get a little nervous to get in the middle of this, too. Well, that's why I'm continuing to say that Colm eventually is going to give up Jamie at the Ooh. end of this episode, at the end of this season, because he is responsible for everybody. And kind of like, it, you know what? It sucks, but it's for the better of the people. It's for the good of the people. Claire's got to go to the trial. Oh, well, you know what Ned does? He comes in and he reminds everyone that in England, people, women are burned and hung without but, any anything you know like oh sure witches but here in scotland we got this thing called lawyers all right <laughs> so um sorry and i love how he was like we're still in scotland right just just want to let's do you guys think you're in england and that's of course like the bad word mm-hmm. and everyone's like no his his boo boo and he's like oh i thought so <laughs> so let's actually have a real trial and let's talk to galus is made galus is made oh, oh man a- she had a lot a lot of dirt. What a dingleberry. Uh, you know, once again, if you're of this time, if this is the kind of stuff you believe in, let's be honest. Gilas was one slippery fish. Okay? You got this farting husband who's dying. She knows that Galus goes and does some weird things mm-hmm. in the moonlight. She knows people come to Galus to get um, abortion mixtures and uh, ill wishes mm-hmm. and all these other things. So if the time comes... And she, this is also the way that the house housemaid can keep her hands clean. Sure. You don't want to be associated with Galas right now. So you throw her under the bus. Yeah. She's like, listen, I've worked for them forever and there's a lot of bad stuff been going on. Can we talk about what a flibber gibbet is? Um, that's pretty much what I want to say to like anyone who annoys me from now on. What the hell is a flibber gibbet? Flibber to gibbet. Flibber to gibbet. Wait, I, 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 whatever. Flibber to gibbet. What? You don't even know. I don't even know what that is. I can't even say it. Flibber to gibbet. <laughs> <laughs> but that's basically what she called Galus when she went and tried to get a job at Castle Leoc. And so I love that Ned had all this information. He was like, oh, you know what? I think you're actually just a really upset employee who feels underpaid, who has to hang out with a farting man and kind of a flaky woman. And can we talk about how astute Ned was at turning everybody's argument around on them? And I know that Claire in her voiceover had mentioned that. But what a fine piece of defensive work. Really, honest to God. I wish I had Ned Gowan. I mean, I'm not going to trial anytime soon for anything. I don't think. I hope not. But, man, I would want him. (laughs) He was fantastic. Took everything everybody said and found the weakness. And the people people who were trying Claire and Galus, as I say that in quotation marks, air quotes, they had no choice other than to accept his defense because he's 100 percent right and even the mob you could tell granted their minds might have only changed for like five seconds but ned was working some magic there he really did a great job the next person of course that came to speak up was the mother of the changeling now the changeling of course was that baby that died in the woods that claire found and people think that you know oh my baby's suddenly sickly i the fairies must have taken it so the mother of this baby had actually seen Claire touch the baby Mm -hmm. and thinks that Claire did some kind of incantation and did not allow the fairies to switch back for the healthy baby. And Ned just ignores everyone else and focuses on this mom. Yeah, and and he is saying, let me do my job. Stop talking. Let me defend you because you are still continuing to incriminate yourself and you need to shut the hell up. And again, this is a little bit of... A pattern with Claire. She just doesn't know when to stop talking. Well, she comes from a different time and she's yelling, you know, oh, I was trying to our, save your baby. Yeah, but but even in courts today or in the forties, they wouldn't let you they wouldn't let you yell. This like is hot headed Claire, you know? Yep. She's she's mortified that this woman's saying you killed my baby when Claire obviously holding this child struck a chord with her and how dare you say that i was trying to hurt this is claire's number one thing is she's a healer Mm -hmm. you know the last thing she would ever do is hurt a child so yeah it kind of stinks here she is on trial she's upset she knows that changes chances are very against her Mm -hmm. i wouldn't be able to hold my tongue that easily either and can we talk about the like the the flashback of this scene during the courtroom when they show claire clutching the baby what 
a really cool shot. Not because it's clear touching the baby, but the coloring of this scene. Mm-hmm. It was very, very vibrant, almost, almost like extended coloring. Uh, so that you're looking at it from this other person's perspective, that everything is just heightened. Everything, it, it's it's much more clear. And the thing I noticed most about it was when they were showing this, the, the mother, they, they showed her eyes. Yes. And her eyes were wide and they were like bright, glowing. like glowing, like glowing with a, a burning hate, a burning um, scared, like a, a, a scared feeling of what is happening? Who is this woman? Why is she touching my baby? She's going to ruin everything. Mm -hmm. So you can almost understand where this person is coming from. But what I have a problem accepting in this scene is the church, who was, again, air quotes, trying Galus and Claire, accepting this testimony of fairies and changelings. There's no way the church, the church is going to accept that. The church is a little different now than it was back then. Yeah, but back then they were even more hardcore. Like if you said anything that w- that said there was more than one God or anything that was not part of the doctrine of of Catholicism, especially probably in Scotland, you were you you were a witch. Uh, this and is a this, different. This is a different land. I, this I is don't a different. Know. This is this is some people who, as Jamie said, they haven't left. But that's why I'm saying the church, these guys that run the church here. The church might be the same kind of people. I mean, that's possible. And once again, just kind of like Colum, you know, are you really going to raise yourself against the masses? Are you going to be a little lenient? I mean, think about the church in general. Why is Christmas December 25th? Because they were like, oh, let's just uh, put it around the winter solstice. Because everybody know. else celebrates it, so yeah, we so, might as well too. <laughs> yeah, so don't don't point fingers at the church. The church uh, doesn't always. Well, li- listen, don't get me started on the church. I, I'm I, not. I, I'm not. I, I can. I you can. Don't go, I can go all day. On? I can start a whole new podcast about the church. Let's talk about Galus flying through the air. <laughs> that was beautiful. Okay, this guy was just literally making stuff up just because he could. He was. He basically was like, "I'm going to go to the library and read what witches are, and then I'm going to come back and say this is what Galus did. She did all this crazy stuff, and it was amazing. And there was lightning when she flicked her hand, and then she flew off like a great winged bird. The end. <laughs> Curtsy. <laughs> really, bro? Oh, that's I, what you're coming at me with. I wish they had Galus on a big zoom up doing a huge eye roll like the people on Housewives do, like yeah. <laughs> the Housewives of <laughs> of like New York or Beverly yes, Hills. <laughs> yes, because it would have been the Housewives of Crane's Mirror. And it would just <laughs> just been Galus. Like, really, buddy? A serious stink guy. <laughs> oh my god! I need a beer and a barbecue. Well, you saw her. She did have a reaction. It was more like it was a laugh. It was a laugh. Like you, like there's just nothing that you can say to that. No yep. matter no matter what you do. Or or come up with it you, you can't even dignify that with a response you know what they do get though what's that they get a flask no oh. ned get, ned's like listen ned coming through again here hopefully this this will make you feel a little bit better you're going back to the hole i'll see you tomorrow and galus um and claire have a little bit more of a bonding time mm-hmm. in this wonderful warm rock cell um claire asks galus if she loves dougal Mm-hmm. And she says, those are your words, not mine. Do but, you think she does? Do you think she really loves him? Well, yeah, because she said, you know, eventually that, that she finally kind of met her match, that she found her right man. And you find out that their love is joined together because they're Jacobites. Yes. Which is huge. And that she's been funneling money from their, her, her, her Arthur Duncan, the, the, the flatulent husband, yep. <laughs> Mr. Fats a lot, to the Jacobite cause. Now, what a great reveal. And it finally gives some context as to how and why these two would have come together. Now, do you think she would have approached Dougal on her own? Like, hey, this is what I'm thinking. Like, here, here's some money. Like, I mean, how did all this go under the radar like that? You know what I mean? Eh, he was farting too much. <laughs> it's totally fine. <laughs> um, so you really find out that Galus cares incredibly much about the Jacobite cause. Like mm-hmm. that's that's absolutely huge. And um, Claire makes a quote while she's talking to 
Galis saying, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. Correct. And this, of course, was uh, famous words from an American spy, Nathan Hale, mm-hmm. before he was executed by the British. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, these are big, famous American words. Yeah. And I, and I think it's funny that Claire, an English woman, chose to quote an American revolutionary... From the future. From the future. Technically, yes. Yeah. And, and and knowing now that Galis is from the future, you wonder if that tipped her off. I think Galis has been tipped off since the beginning. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty positive. And, and I said this, I, that was my outlandish theory of the week, uh, the first day we met Galis, that was that she was from the future. But it, it maybe confirmed for her that Claire was from the future. Because yeah. there's no way she would possibly know that. And it's not like that is just some little saying. That's a, a, a big, famous saying from the uh, American Revolution, right? So come on now. What are we doing here? And the other thing that was was, too, was funny, too, was when Galas ends up saying later on in the episode, I guess I'm going to a fucking barbecue. Really cool stuff. Like, first of all, okay, you wouldn't know what the word fucking means. Because Jamie didn't. No, he Claire didn't. had to clear that up a couple episodes ago. And I got a feeling that nobody in Scotland in 1743 ever said the word barbecue. It was really great because as she said that, I like slyly looked over at you through the sides <laughs> of my eyes because I was trying to be like, oh my God, did he just pick up on that? That she A said fucking and B said barbecue. C, I think I would like some barbecue tonight. Um, but... Wow. And so I was watching it because it just was said so quickly Mm -hmm. and there was just so much stuff going on. But at that point, you didn't know Mm -hmm. that for sure Galas did come from a different time. But I I heard that and I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Hot dogs and burgers, baby. It's it's good. (laughs) (laughs) Hot dogs and burgers. Uh, Yeah. No, I I think that – even Claire didn't recognize it because she probably would know those terms. I mean, she obviously knows what fucking is, and she probably knows what barbecue is. Yes, of course she does. So it was just part of her vernacular. So she probably didn't think anything of it when Gayla said it. So that's probably- There was just a lot on Claire's plate at that time. She didn't I, I have time so. to overanalyze. You know who had time to overanalyze, though? Mm-hmm. Leary. Leary is the person that comes up on trial the next day mm-hmm. And you find out that she's just playing the cards still. You know, I came to Claire for a love potion. Claire took it for herself. She, he made, she made Jamie not love me. Blah, 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 blah. Then she slapped me. And I know that Matt Roberts said we had no reason to not like her, you know, in the previous episodes. Well, for episode 109, mm-hmm. you didn't. But, but he now, said that completely changed after episode 10. Now I hate this bitch. Hate her. Oh. I'm saying it. I went there. Yep. I went there. I cannot the, – the, her very pig-faced little nose just just drives me up a wall. Ugh. F you. And you know what? It's okay. You can bend things your way. You can bend them to say she gave me this potion. She did this. And you know what? She's not wrong. She's not wrong that Claire gave her the potion. She, she concocted this thing. But she's dead up lies. And when she says she took it her for herself – and she stole Jamie away from me. We're supposed to be together. All this crap. You don't straight up lie like that. And that's what makes me hate you. <sighs> like, that's what... Oh, my God. You know what? You love Jamie. You go on a little bitch fest. You set up this this confrontation with Claire. Hey, that's your prerogative. You can do all that. You're smart enough to do it. But don't lie. Don't don't just make stuff up. Like, like Galas flying. <laughs> I can't stand that. And, That's what they did at witch trials. And I, and I can't stand the fact that the church, again, air quotes, church, was relying on this, air quotes, testimony from a 16-year-old girl saying that Jamie and I were meant to be together. I'm sorry, what? Well, yeah. She, what? Thought, she thought so. She I, thought so. Yeah, she thought so. But these people are adults. They're, they're like normal people. They're like, well, they're not normal people, but they're like just Joes, you know? And they're, they're taking this testimony as, as truth from this 16-year-old girl. They have no context whatsoever. Jamie and I were supposed to be together. She ruined everything. These people will just believe anything. Oh, my But then God. someone comes in with some actual power. 
Father Bane and the shot of him coming down once again lit from the window from behind. Yep. All you saw is black, but then the white cross. This scene has caused a lot of confusion online. And I'm interested to hear your perspective. Okay. Some people think, so of course, Father Bane comes up and he says he really didn't like Claire. He didn't think she was okay. He was pretty much saying she's a bad girl. But she ended up actually diagnosing the sick child properly, whereas he didn't. Mm -hmm. And she saved the sick child. And he feels so bad about this that he thinks he needs to be relieved of his priestly duties, like his job. Mm -hmm. So some people see it as Father Bane almost coming to her rescue and saying, listen, I thought this woman was bad. She actually did really great things. I messed up. I messed up and called her some terrible names, treated her poorly. I judged her incorrectly. I shouldn't even be here. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't even be a priest. Mm -hmm. So some people think that he was doing something nice. Of course, the crowd reacted and was like, oh, my God, she's brainwashed Father Bane. Now he's going to leave. <laughs> oh, no, burn the witch. Whereas other people see it as that was his plan all along. Mm -hmm. And he does give this little weird smile towards the women's direction. And as I said, some people see it as, sorry, guys, I tried. Or, ha no, I totally screwed you. <laughs> Look at me. I like made such a crazy story and it totally worked the way that I wanted. So how did you see Father Bain? Did you actually think he was genuinely trying to kind of like apologize to Claire and get it off his chest? Kind of like a mini confession? No. Or did you no. see it as him weaving a beautiful web that rivals Leary, her and her web weaving? Uh, uh, a beautiful, beautiful web of, web, not of lies, but of truths. And suggesting that he fall on the sword for Claire to a group of people that have complete faith in him. It's almost like saying... Hey, she did all this. She was right. And maybe I'm not the person that should be ahead of all of this. I'm not the person that should be serving you anymore. I'm giving myself up to save this woman. But we all know that people there are terrified of Father Bane. They know Father Bane a lot more than they do this woman. So they're going to take his testimony like, no, 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 you can't leave. You can't leave. Oh, you we, poor we, thing. You she poor must thing. have put a, put a spell on you. Yeah, you, you. It sucks for you. And I'm sorry that this happened. But you're our guy. You're our boy. You're our boy. And part of me almost did believe that this was a genuine testimony. Like, I'm trying to save you, Claire. Part of me did believe that until I saw that smile. That smile. And you know what the sound, you know what sound happened when he, when he gave that smile? What? Yeah. Sadly, that, I don't think that was in Bear McCreary's score, but it yeah, should have been. I got you. It should have been because Claire, the price was wrong for Claire. <laughs> so, you know, I think Ned Gowan had some hope up until now. Yeah. And uh, he pulled pretty much the escape cord and was like, girls, let's go in the back room. Um, here's a scoop. One of you needs to die. Mm -hmm. Either both of you or one of you. And Galus, I think you pretty much need to die and you can tell you know and claire can say that galus put her under a spell yeah but specifically because she's been doing this now this whole witch type thing again yeah. air quotes she's been doing it for a long time now and she was like really outwardly doing it she wasn't being careful with what she was saying or doing to people she played the role up a little bit which makes me which surprises me a lot specifically now knowing that galus was a traveler thank you very much i'm just going to do this again Bam. Just, like that. Just because of that, I feel like she, especially since she was helping the Jacobites, should have done this a little bit more quietly, especially considering her relationship with Dougal now. She should have, she should have been a lot more quiet with how it was going down. Well, tact is not Galus nor Dougal's strong suit, so it's kind of tough. Tough to say that. Uh, while the ladies are having a little bit of their bonding time in this room, the mob is getting really revved up outside. Galus goes into, like, mission mode. Yep. Why did you come here, Claire? No bullshit. Yeah. Like, tell Out me. Out the door. Yeah, like, she's like, oh, I was here from Oxford. No, 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 no. No. Why you come here? are you here? What happened? What are you here for? Claire just says, I came here by accident. I just want to go home. Yeah. 
And and she knew, and that was it for her. She knew right then and there that Claire was a traveler. Yep. That she, like her, like Galus herself, was a traveler. And now she's saying, okay, well, maybe we can continue to do what I want to do. I have been funneling money, filtering money from my husband to the Jacobites to maybe change history. And I give Ron Moore and maybe Diana Gabaldon, I'm not sure, because I'm not sure if this was written in the book like that, but I give her credit for saying this can happen. Someone can go back in time and really consider themselves a person that can affect the future. And that's what Galus was nervous about. That's That was her big question. She said, so you don't want to change things or do anything, do you? Nothing. It's really all for nothing. Yeah, all for nothing. Yeah. And, th- and now she realizes that Dougal probably isn't coming. And... Claire isn't here to change the future. All the work that she's done has just gone to the wayside. And now she's going to be a fucking barbecue. (laughs) And this also suggests, too, the time travel aspect of this show. Has Galus always gone back in time? Has Claire always gone back in time? Have they always been part of 1743 Scotland? throughout eternity right it's whatever happened happened you can't change time time is insurmountable it is you you cannot affect it in any way or can you i mean what do you think can you do you think i can't tell you because you haven't read the books so i can't tell you what's what how time travel works in this universe yeah that's no no but i'm just saying like just the idea behind it can can someone go back in time and change it or did someone always go back in time and change or try to change it it? varies based upon which series you're reading about time (laughs) travel i'll leave it at that you know something that i didn't love so we go back to the courtroom of course and ned gowan decides I'm just going to pull out this gun. Uh, you know, there's like a bajillion people here. <laughs> I'm just going to start shooting. I just don't know it's, what to do. It's the return of Ned Billy the Kid Gowan. You know, and and Claire then gets ripped up and she starts saying, you'll all be damned. You'll burn in hell. Probably things you don't want to be saying. Like, I get it. <laughs> You're pissed off. Yeah. You know, whatever. So they rip off her her dress and they start whipping her. And God, that really looks like it hurts. What? I mean, like, okay. All right. Ned's there, right? And he's like, hey, these are my clients. I'm defending them. I've done everything within the within the, the boundaries of the law. No, just take out my gun. Hey, let's whip out my gun and start shooting people. Yep, yep. Like, no, you, you can't take my you can't take my clients. What I'm sorry, Ned. What what do you think is gonna happen? Porn. You know what it was? It was that scene back when he actually shot someone. Yeah. And he was so proud of himself. So I think that's what he thought. He was like, oh my god, I can be a hero. I can do it again. I can be your hero, Claire. <laughs> You know, he just whips it out, forgetting that there's like 300 people there. Anyway, I loved as painful as it was to watch Claire get whipped Uh or just, yeah, beat. um, I loved how Galus was looking at her. Mm -hmm. Like a real like, oh, my God, I cannot believe this is happening. Like a real look of shock and disgust. Yes. You know, I think what's happening is she I mean, after she utters the words 1968. To Claire, which I thought was a real subtle and cool way of telling the viewers and Claire that she was from the future. Mm-hmm. She's like, I think you can go back 1968. I think it was a, a really cool, subtle way of doing that. But especially after knowing that she's from the future and, and it's su- subtly admitting it to Claire, she now realizes she has the opportunity. To, she's the only one that has the power. Yeah, she can save Claire. Yeah, She's the only one that... Hey, look, I can't believe they're doing this to you. We need to stop this. And and you can see you're battling with it. Like, do I do I say this? Because either way, they're dead. Either way, one of them is dead. Yeah. And in, in the or jig both. and the jig may be up for Galus, but it can still go on with Claire. And even though Claire didn't say that she wants to change the future. She still has the ability to do it. And I think that's the reason why Galus ended up making this big statement that I am a witch. I am, you know, I'm going to have the devil's son and all this other nonsense because she, that's her only way of giving back to the Jacobite rebellion. 
and and maybe ensuring Claire to try to change the future. Because ultimately Claire is going to take this knowledge that Galus gave her and it's going to it's going to fester. It's going to it's going to be in her brain. Do something. I mean, you have to remember too. Claire's, you know, from England. So maybe Galus was nervous. Oh crap, she's going to come and fight the other side of the battle. Mm-hmm. But for Claire just to be like, "Listen, I have no idea how I got here. I just want to go home. I just want my mommy, you know. <laughs> I don't really like it here." Whether Galus thought that Claire could help her in the journey or not, I don't think that she thinks any damage will be done. Well, by I think Claire being I think alive. I think Galus took a gamble. Yeah. Knowing that Claire has some things invested now in this time. She she's in love with Jamie. She's got all this stuff going on for her now. Maybe she will sacrifice her own life uh, morals yeah. to change the future just the way Gales wanted it. So Jamie comes in to save the day and does this beautiful little speech about how he um you know, put in a vow, a vow, an oath before God mm-hmm. that he was going to protect this woman. And if any of these people think they're above God, you know, that's something else. But mm-hmm. uh, until then, he's going to protect Claire. So it's very valiant, very sweet of him. But to be honest, he gets completely overshadowed by Galus. And thank God, yeah. Galus does her thing because everything's going on. Jamie's here now. He has about as much shot as Ned Gowan of rescuing <laughs> With Claire. With his sword. Yeah, two, sorry, two swords. Two swords. <laughs> Seriously. Um, and that's when Galus decides now it's now or never. Mm-hmm. Never. And she says, this woman is no witch. I am. I killed my husband. I took advantage of Claire Fraser. Uh, and by the way... I serve my master. Here's my devil's mark, a.k.a. my smallpox vaccine. And she gives Claire this little look, pretty much winks, like, girl, (laughs) if you haven't gotten it by now, I'm with you. Okay? Trust me. (laughs) Okay, let's do this. And says, I'm having the devil's baby. Okay, holy prosthetic bump. Wow. I know, right? And it looked pretty good, by the way. It looked amazing. And she was able to move with it because part of me was like, wow. She's such a good actress. She can like really bloat her belly. <laughs> but then I thought, you know what? We already know that there's such great prosthetic work. They probably just put a pregnant belly on top of her. Thank but you, she Christian. Was able Mallet. to like move and wiggle as they carried her, and that's where we got to see the red shoes again. And of course, the court men were like, "Oh my gosh, she's indecent, <laughs> and she's pregnant with child." She Come ripped on. off her shirt, and she's like, "Oh my god, it's the devil taking advantage of me." And Galus loves feeling the air on her nipples. It turns him into a. <laughs> Acorns. Acorns. Did it again, man. The boob count is back up again. Oh, my goodness. Add, add so, another two. Galus is carried away, and what brilliant acting. So frightened as you're watching this. Mm-hmm. And Claire and Jamie finally escape. But Claire, I mean, I just, I wouldn't have stayed. I wouldn't even stayed that one minute to, mm-hmm. like, watch her get pulled down the road. And And I give the Outlander crew, and I give... The uh, the the people that made the show credit for not showing the burning, I, I give them credit for that because you know why. It uh, it's like not seeing the shock in Jaws. Yes, right. Y- you don't need to see the shock. You don't need to know that it will just eat you up inside. You know, it it it, it will it will make your life miserable. You can you can see that in your own brain. You know what's going to happen. Yeah, you, you know, know what exactly. you know what's coming, and, and it's not that important because to see it versus to know it. Yeah, you know, and and I go back and forth on it. Is is it important to see? Is it important to see it that she gets burned? Because you know you you're in this time. It is dangerous. It's magical. It's it, it it kind of is a little bit. It's definitely magical. They time travel in this show. <laughs> and they, like I said last last podcast, this time is not modern time. People will kill you. And they have no problem doing whatever they feel like to you. And if that means you have to burn on a cross or you have to burn on a pyre, then you're going to burn. And that is important to show that to get to get the the feeling of danger. Or is it more important to imagine it yourself? Mm-hmm. Is it more scary to imagine? And that's the answer. I think so. 
So I give the director, Matt Barker, who was fantastic in this episode, a lot of credit for making that choice. And even the writers, too. A lot, lot of good stuff. I will tell you this. In the books, we don't necessarily see Galus burn mm-hmm. because Jamie is like, Claire, we got to get the heck out of Dodge. But I agree with you. I think sometimes in television, people would choose to show something like that. Mm-hmm. So I'm happy that they kind of stuck with that route of less is more. And can we talk about the mental state for Galus just a little bit more to know that Dougal isn't coming for her. Knowing that Jamie has come for Claire, but Dougal's not there for her. Can you imagine the letdown? Can you imagine like, oh my God. Traveled all this way, all this time, killed my husband, finally found my match. Where's my knight in shining armor? And where the hell is the knight in shining armor? (laughs) Why is he not there? Well, we don't know. And we don't even know how Jamie got here. Yeah, but regardless, Jamie was there. And we know that Jamie was with Dougal, right? We know it. Yep. So how did Jamie get word, number one, okay? Number two, you know that Jamie probably had a conversation with Dougal being like, hey, bro, our girls, (laughs) they're going to be put under trial and they're they're being considered witches. What are we going to go do about this? So wh- where where is Dougal in all of this? I don't know, Blake. Where do you think he is? Oh, he's such a dink. I just have to look away at this moment. I'm really beginning to not like Dougal. I'm like, ugh, all of this crap with the with the w- with the wife and the kid and the the love relationship with Gayliss, and then okay, you know what? All that stuff I can look past. I I can get past all of that. No problem. Show up for the girl when she needs you. Be the knight in shining armor. Where are you? What are we doing here? You're not cool, bro. I'm not, I'm not down with Dougal anymore. I'm done. Oh, okay. And you know what? You know what the worst part of all of this is? What? Our name Google can no longer be used. <laughs> oh, Google. Google has been officially retired. Oh, well, we can, you know, we can reference them in oh, in passing. Oh so, my god, um, I love Google. That was the best nickname we've ever come up I with. I know. I know. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty happy about it. So, Jamie and Claire go off and Jamie tries to take care of Claire's wounds a little bit mm-hmm. and Claire ends up telling Jamie the truth because he looks at her and he's like, "Listen, I know you got some things you don't want to talk about, but can you just let me know are you are you a witch?" Yeah, and you know what? I'm going to play a clip here from from the episode that I I think really describes their relationship. Like I've already – we already played at the beginning what Jamie said, which I felt was the most pertinent to to this entire episode. But the other part of it was was this. I know there are things you didn't wish to tell me. I have one thing to ask you. Honesty. When you do tell me something, let it be the truth. And I promise you the same. I agree. Now that to me is marriage. No matter what. I I remember when we were watching Breaking Bad. And spoiler alert for anybody that hasn't watched Breaking Bad. Walter White is a meth dealer. And you had asked me when we were watching Breaking Bad, would you tell me that you were dealing meth? Yes, I asked you that. And... I remember saying, yeah, I would. I would tell you. And not because, oh, it would be cool, like I'm a meth dealer making tons of money, but because you're my wife. And no matter what, you have to have these kind of conversations. You have to be able to tell your wife that you're dealing meth. You have to be able to tell your husband, hey, guess what, dude? I'm from the future. <laughs> you, you have to be able to do that. And, and I love that Jamie came up to her and said, I don't care what you tell me. Doesn't matter to me. Just tell me the truth. Because I've seen the devil's mark on your arm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Galas just said it was the devil's mark. And, and wasn't it great when he he really he calls her out on it, saying, "Listen, if 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 you're a witch, I gotta know, <laughs> because we we gotta protect ourselves here." And he, he takes it as though it is truly the devil's mark. But we all we all know that it's not. And she explains to him, "Oh, it's just it's fighting this disease, yada yada." But the mentality behind this conversation is what makes me 
Oh, I, I'd hate to say this. It makes me fall in love with Jamie a little oh. bit. Oh. It does. You know, what? what's so great about this scene, and a lot of people are like, wow, he, he took the time traveling stuff pretty darn well. Claire takes him down the journey and tells him the entire story. Yes, she does. And, it, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. And Jamie knows she's being honest with him because they have made this promise to each other. But... On the other hand, Jamie lives in magical fairy Scotland, Mm -hmm. you know, and yes, he's very smart and he doesn't believe that the fairies took those babies. But if you remember way back when, when um, Claire had a little, little too much to drink during the Leary hooking up with Jamie phase, there was a musician that came and sang a song Mm -hmm. about women traveling through stones Mm -hmm. through time. So even stories like Claire's, are something that are part of Jamie's culture. So he he may believe it, but he's not like totally out of this world about it. Like that I've never heard such nonsense before. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you're right. He, he's talk he's living in a time where fairies are doing this and we're we're talking about women traveling through time. There are songs about it. You're right. It's 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 probably more common to him than we think or even Claire thinks. And, and, and I got another clip I want to play saying or that l- gives light to this. I told him everything, the whole story. It came pouring out of me like a cataract of water over a broken dam. I didn't realize how badly I needed to tell someone, anyone, until that moment. He listened. He didn't understand it all, but he listened. And that's it. He just listened and she was able to be honest. She was able to talk about Black Jack Randall, about the Jacobites, all these different things. Mm-hmm. You know, it it wasn't so far off. Yeah. As crazy as that sounds. Yes, I'm a time traveler. Yep. But it's real, man. But the fact that Jamie said, tell me more. The, the, the way he reacted to this conversation is exactly the way that I would react to you if you were to tell me something cra- outlandish. All right, and, and again, like I'm from the future. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Wouldn't that be so cool? That would be wicked cool. But oh my god, I just I loved his reaction. That that look of uh, concern, but earnestness and determination. Slash, when, it would have been easier if you were a witch. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I got that here too. I believe you, Sassanak. Oh, it would have been a good deal easier if you'd only been a witch. <laughs> true story. Right? <laughs> Hashtag true life. <laughs> Hashtag sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Jamie Fraser problems. Hashtag I love Jamie. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally on the jamf train now. Okay, so they they come to this amazing understanding. And... Unbelievable. Uh, Love kind of is now even more so between them because Claire was able to get this off of her chest. Jamie now understands her a lot more Mm -hmm. and uh, they decide to have a little bonding time. Uh, Bonding time is not Which you didn't like, but I'm telling you, man, this is one of the main ways that Jamie and Claire connect. One of the main ways that they show love for one another. Mm -hmm. And I loved this. I loved it because it wasn't about Jamie necessarily being satisfied. It was about him saying, Claire, I got you. I get you. I want to see you. I I finally see you for, for everything that you are. And Which is great. It, it's cathartic. It's cathartic for Claire. It's cathartic for Jamie. But it's cathartic for the viewer, too. Really, because how long was Claire going to be able to keep doing this? How long was she going to be able to keep lying to Jamie? You know, and like the way I thought it was going to happen, I, I thought that she was going to end up telling him at the end of this season. And for some somehow, some way he would understand it or not and then she would you know she would they they would figure it out you know like the the, maybe the closing words of the season one was i'm from the future boom boom you know black (laughs) Uh, i thought that's how it was going to happen but it's great it was great for storytelling because now you have an opportunity to figure out how is jamie and claire gonna go forward knowing this information and will Jamie try to use Claire 
to change with the future. Well, before we even get to that, Jamie is saying, Claire, I'm so excited to bring you home. I'm so excited for you to see Lollybrock. It's going to be great. They have a little campfire. And then he says, all right, Claire, you ready to go home? Walk up that hill, honey. (laughs) <laughs> well, let me ask you this, too. He's telling her all about Lallybrock, right? He's telling her, yo, you were going to go home, and he's selling her on Lallybrock. But all the while, he knows he's bringing her to Craig Nadoon. Do you think he knew he was bringing her there, number one? And do you think he made his choice about Claire and her going back to Frank I when she knows- admitted yeah, I think he knows that it's not his choice. You know, he said he felt so bad that he beat her yes. when all she was trying to do was get back to her husband, you know, and he – there's probably this little, 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 little part of him that doesn't really believe the time traveling just because it's so out of this world. You mm-hmm. know, like if I told you I was a time traveler, you'd be like, I love you, Mary. I believe you a lot. There's this little part of me that doesn't believe in it still. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand – you know, one can say that Claire was never his to have, mm-hmm. that she was married, that up until just recently, she's been trying to get back to her husband. That's what he says. You've been trying to get back to him all along. And she's mm-hmm. like, yeah, I've been trying to get back to Frank. So I think Jamie has been wrestling with the fact of, wow, am my wife safe? My name should hopefully be cleared pretty soon. Let's go back to Lollybrock. And then the more he thinks about it, the more he has that overnight to really think about it, he realizes that... He doesn't have the right to make that choice. Yeah, he has to give her the opportunity yeah. to do that. So he brings Claire to Craig Nadoon, and she is shocked as all hell. And she should be. And Jamie uh, touches the stone. <laughs> and nothing happens. And he's like, oh, is it this one? <laughs> this one Oops. right here? Wow. <laughs> Look at that. And he basically says, you know, I'm, I'm going to let you go back to Frank. I'm going to just hang out down by the campfire to make sure that nothing bad happens because, you know, Redcoat showed up last time you were here. Mm-hmm. And Claire starts to go towards the stones and he stops her. Yeah, and I like this too. Bear McCreary did... Oh, I'm not sure if this was Bear McCreary's touch or if this was something on the director's part. But she's saying, you know, there was this weird buzzing sound that happened and I just went up and touched the stones. And as this was happening, you have the music rising and rising and rising and you have like almost this, almost again, this buzzing sound as she was saying it. And it's coming right to a crescendo when she goes just about to touch it and then she gets whacked away. And he says, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. I just wasn't ready. Meaning I wasn't ready to say goodbye. But then Jamie takes a very strong stance and says that there is nothing for her on this side. It's your own time. On the other side of that stone, you have a home there. Your place. The things you're used to. Nothing for you on this side. Nothing. Save violence and danger. Now go. And you, Jamie Fraser, hello. Oh violence and danger, totally worth it. <laughs> what women want right there. Right? And, uh, and this here also sold me on Jamie, too. Because, yes, he loves Claire. But he understands that she was married before. He understands that... She has an opportunity to go back to her original husband, and he's doing the right thing. He is. And as much as it sucks, and as much as it hurts him, because you can see it, he eventually when she comes back to him, he, he's crying, as in tears are, are coming down his face. He's willing to let her go. Mm-hmm. Because it's, it's her life. And he is protecting her in a sense. That there, there's nothing here for her other than danger and, and everything else. And I'm almost a little surprised when he says, there's nothing for you here. But there is. It's him. He is there. Yeah. And I'm surprised Claire didn't have more of a reaction to that. Like, um, Jamie, I'm sorry, what? Uh, you're here. Because if she was indeed in love with Jamie, and, and you know that she is because she ultimately she is, makes yeah. this choice to stay with him regardless, I feel like she'd be a little bit more pissed off about that. I don't know. I mean, she's been trying to get back to Frank this entire time, so mm-hmm. it's difficult to say. And she just kind of went through hell in a handbasket. Yeah. So I'm not going to pick on Claire too much. The one thing that I think about uh, is I 
I wonder how different it would have been if the episode would have ended with her touching the stones. Mm -hmm. So we didn't get to see that she chose Jamie right now. Yeah. So especially for people like you who haven't read the book, if you were to think next episode, does it start off with her in 1945? Back in the future. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but a new chapter is going to be happening for Jamie and Claire. So I see why they had to end it this way. So of course she she goes towards the stones. And chooses Jamie. Yeah, and the, the, this was great because, again, there, there's a lot of rhyming in this season. You know, with with the previous season one A, Jamie getting his back whipped in the Garrison Commander, and now we have Claire getting her back whipped and Jamie saving her. Jamie telling her she is his home, and now she chooses Jamie. She chooses Lallybrock as her home. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's beautiful. And of course she goes up to him and says, on your feet, soldier, take me home to Lallybrock. It's beautiful. Jamie cries. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So much love, 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 love. Except the book reader part of me mm -hmm. sat there and said, um, what are people like Blake going to think? Are you going to think that she could go back to the stones? Was it turned off? Did she take a glimpse into it, change her mind? Like what happened? So I'm hoping that in the next episode, they explained actually what happened in that little bit of time because uh, like, do you miss Frank after all at all? Are you choosing 100%? Like we're supposed to take from this, yes, that she has now made her choice that she wants to be with Jamie. Mm -hmm. I just wish that we had your uh, – <laughs> clarification <laughs> the, the voiceovers that we couldn't stand that much in the beginning i wish we had a little bit of that to hear what went through her mind to hear how that process went down well i'll tell you i don't think you needed the clarification and i'll tell okay. you why because when she's what they did with this whole sequence with jamie and claire when she tells him that she's from the future and when eventually when he tells her to go they were patient they didn't rush it. They allowed time to elapse between the sentences, between the revelations. The thing – sometimes what I don't like about this show is that it, it just moves too quickly. It, it tells you everything that you need to know and it doesn't take its time. Okay. It, it doesn't let you soak things in. And this, these two sequences, it did take its time and allowed you – to be in Claire's position, especially one of the things I really liked is when Jamie leaves, he takes off, she says goodbye, and she doesn't go immediately for the rock. She sits down. Yeah. And she's she like, okay, am I, am I really going to do this? Looking down at her hands and oh, you see both the rings. You have Frank's ring, gold, shiny, smooth, easy. She sees her reflection in it. It's an easy future for her. It's there's it's, toilets. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's indoor plumbing. <laughs> there's antibiotics. It, it's knowing that my life is going to go back to normal. It's going to be easy. It's going to be smooth, you know. And she sees herself in that life. She sees herself in that ring. She looks at Jamie's ring. It's rough. It's tumble. It, there's there's pockets and there's nooks and crannies and it's just a mess and it's bonded at this one center point and it's pointy and it doesn't fit right and that right there is telling you exactly what she's thinking because she does make the move to go into the rock which i thought was a little corny by the way the way they shot that um as much credit as i give uh Matt Barker for the job he did for directing this episode. That one shot of the of the camera going directly up to the rock. I thought that was so corny. Oh. I really did. Mm. It, like it should have showed her maybe, or I don't know. I, I'm not sure how they should have done it. And it, that's so easy for me to say. And like, oh, they shouldn't have done that, but I don't know what else to do. But she does go up to the rock, and you hear that buzzing sound. But she comes back out of it. Does she make the choice to go and then say, mm, maybe not? Did she go back to the 1940s, get there and say, no, I shouldn't have done that? Here's a question for you. Does she go to the 1940s, get there and be like, no, I don't like this. But she comes back to the rocks 
and it, the rocks poured it back at the same exact time. I don't know, Blake. You just have to find out. Because time did pass. Time did pass yeah. on the Scottish side. It was night. It was clearly day when she hit the rocks. And then Jamie's there at night uh, by the fire. And there it is. I'm not going to tell you. Sadly. I'm telling you. Okay. You know what? I'm just going to leave it there. I'm going I'm to let the ether accept it. Well, that was the episode. And what an episode it was. Wow. Four and a half kilts. And, and it's four and a half kilts because it's believable. All the interaction with Claire and Jamie was believable. It was real. And it, actually, I really cared about what was going to happen. I knew that Claire was not going to be set on fire. But I'll tell you, I didn't think that Gales was going to be set on fire either. And yet she was. It kept me on the edge of my seat the entire episode. And not just because it was suspenseful, because, but because towards the end when Jamie and Claire are there, she's telling him she's from the future. And how is he going to react how are they going to get through this together? That is excellent, excellent TV writing. That makes that that's compelling TV. I think we are not the only ones who felt this way. Our listeners went gaga for this episode. All right, Blakes, we had some feedback on our website. Yes, we did. And the first bit of feedback comes from Sarah. She says, that was some opening scene, referring back to the last episode. She said, the camera angles made it so beautiful and sensual. I always focus on Claire's rings since she wears two and what that symbolizes and means for her to have her gold band be so prominent at that moment when she was like, pushing him into her. Uh, it just makes her think of Frank and she has a, gl- a growing love for Jamie, but Frank is still there for her. And the reason why I put this in here is because she has this choice between Frank and Jamie. And no matter what, she knows she loves Frank, but she still chooses Jamie. You know, And I, I thought that the juxtaposition of the two rings not only in this episode but in the previous episode uh it is a real is really indicative of that i like that a lot we also got an email from pam g she says the thing that drives me batty about claire is that her word is worth nada zilp zilch zero if she makes a promise she believes it at that moment but forgets the moment the words leave her mouth and it makes claire hard to like sometimes and that's not far from the truth. Claire's word doesn't really mean anything so far. If she says, I promise to do this, she's just going to do whatever she wants anyway, right? She's a very strong-willed woman. I, I will say that, yes. But she's smart. She's tough. She's strong. But does she have any honor? Do you think she's gained honor now by choosing Jamie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is, this is kind of a really huge, huge deal. Not to say that Claire still won't be a strong-willed woman. Mm-hmm. I mean, she still is who she is, but yeah, she's, um, she's, she's changed. This, this event has changed her. We had some fantastic feedback on Facebook. Krista Thomas says that one of the biggest surprises for her was how sympathetic Galus' character was in this episode. And Outlander Musings says the strongest moment for me was when Claire was given a choice. She chose not to lie and save herself. And then she, of course, chose to stay with Jamie. Both times the other choice would have been better for her, but she chose the right thing on the first account and the truer thing on the second. Great moments. Yeah, but what about choosing Jamie makes it any truer? Because that is her love. But isn't Frank's love true as well? It's different. Different? Different. All right. Mahir M. Bajaj. Wow. Cool name. The tear on Jamie's treat cheek really surprised me. And Galus being from 1968 and having a smallpox mark that she didn't know was one when she confessed to her witchcraft all surprised me. You know, I'm not surprised by Jamie's tear. I'm really not. Yeah, he loves her. He, so. he loves her and he's an emotional man. We already know that he's an emotional man. It takes a lot of balls to be to admit the things that Jamie has admitted to her. So I get why he has the tear. Kim Brothers Downing says, 
the last half hour with just Jamie and Claire was so emotional. When Jamie was watching Claire sleep and trying to memorize her face, heartbreaking. Even though I read the book and knew the outcome, it still had me on the edge of my seat. Ooh, ours too. We had some awesome feedback on Instagram. I'm going to run through these quickly. Joyfully centered. So this is my favorite episode right after the wedding. Powerful acting all around. The attention to detail on every level. Production values are so high. Is superb. Bravo to all. Arkun871 loved this episode. Unlike last week's episode, I felt like they fit a ton of things into it without it feeling rushed or choppy. Agreed. The end of the trial made me cry more than the end of the episode with uh, with Claire and Jamie. Disagree. I <laughs> I think I could. I think I was just disappointed in all the information and conversations between Gillis and Claire that they could have given us. However, I wonder if we'll still get some of those conversations one day. Time travel is tricky like that. Also, the barbecue comment had me laughing out loud. The remaining episodes are going to be crazy. Can't wait. Randy Christie said it felt so real. It touched me in the most painful places. Very powerful. I agree. If you're married, you understand those painful places. Ooh, even if you're not married if you if you know what love is i want to know what love is <laughs> diddly said just brilliant i can't remember the last time i enjoyed anything on tv as much as this wow and Nona's 34 said well written I love how they transitioned this pivotal point in the book into the screen outstanding job by everyone writers crew and cast let me ask you was it as different in the book as it was in the show what do you mean like as how, different? I'm sorry. Was it was it was it much different in the book than it was in the show? Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm not going to get into that now because I think that's a conversation for another day. I mean, you get to the same thing, you know. Sure. Yeah. But um, Claire gets free and decides to stay with Jamie. I'll tell you that. Just little <laughs> things here or there were different, but I think that they appropriately changed those things for the television screen. Okay. On Twitter, L. J. Wilson says. I'm all for women, like, you know, self-rescuing, but oh my, let Jamie do the hero thing. Did you gasp when Galus uttered 1968? No, because I had the outlandish theory of the week. <laughs> Boom. Nailed it. Dropped the mic. Annika said, I kind of wish that Galus and Claire had been honest with each other earlier. Quite the interesting plot development. You think they should have been honest with each other earlier? Like, th- they should have known each other that they were from the, f- the future? No. No? You don't think so? No, because I don't trust Galus. <laughs> Clace. Uh, Never I'm... mind. Clace, no. <sighs> okay, here it is. Sorry. Here. Mary is messing with the Google document. <laughs> Again, like she always does. Clace says, my English fella just doesn't understand how hard the choices are. Penicillin or a hot scot in a kilt. Mm. Mm, I think I would choose penicillin. I'm not going to lie. Kate Bonner says, Mary, I don't know how you've kept a straight faith face with all of Blake's outlandish theories. Some definitely came true this week. Yes, they did. Katie, it's been really hard. <laughs> the Vertigo says, I'm ready to switch the channel on Outlander. Not a book reader, so I don't have rose colored glasses. And they cannot sway me with the sex scenes. You know, I the sex scenes, um, sure, they're beautiful. But the Vertigo, if this episode didn't sway you, oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. What I want to know, Vertigo, is why are you changing the channel on this after this episode? And, I, and I'm not saying that's wrong. I, what I want to know is why. What didn't do it for you? Yeah, what didn't do in this In this particular episode... I could see the past two episodes. I get it, but this one, I, I'm not really sure. I, 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 I'd like a, I'd like a little bit more explanation on that. Elflander Fraser said, "I expected Father Bane to be spouting hell and brimstone and damnation. Not that calm performance, but Whore of Babylon was bad." <laughs> yeah, you know, did, were you surprised by that portrayal? Did, did you expect him to kind of do that bait and switch? No, no, I didn't either. I thought he was going to go in there, like like, like she says. Hell and Brimstone. I thought that was how I was going to go down. Ornella says, I'm not crying. I just have Outlander's season one, episode 11 in my eye. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was smart. It was almost the tweet of the week. Almost the tweet of the week. But before we get to the tweet of the week, let's do the voicemails. Mary and Blake, Eddie Potter from New Jersey, driving. I saw episode 111 on demand last night. And uh, for one thing, I'm going to call you before the podcast. It was enchanting. After being a book reader for so long and seeing how that played out when she Claire had to make her choice, it was enchanting. 
my stomach is still doing splits, and I watched it over 12 hours ago. Every time I think about it, I get teared up. I, I loved every minute of it. And if I recall correctly, Blake, one of your uh, Atlantis theories was indeed true about Elon Duncan coming from another time. Thank you, guys. I just want to interject here real quick. Teddy, you are 100% right um, about not only my outlandish theory of the week, of course, but also the fact that it was a beautiful way to get the show geared towards Jamie and Claire and how are they going to go be or, or at least go forward. But one thing I did not like about this was the fact that you have been watching this on demand before the show actually airs. And it's not your fault. You're, you're, you're doing exactly what you should be doing. You should be watching the show. But I guess it's just more of a philosophy uh, uh, on Star's behalf. Why are they doing this on demand thing before the show actually airs? People are seeing this before the nine o'clock at set on Saturday night. And to me, that takes away from the community of it all. It takes away from everybody seeing it and watching it together. Not only that, I noticed, at least on my Verizon Fios on demand, it is not in HD. And now I know not everybody has HD TVs, but I do. And I really appreciate HD. Why are you putting out an inferior product on Star's behalf when you know your superior product is coming on Saturday at 9? Why are you making people watch this inferior product? You know that the, all the fans are going to enjoy the show. They're going to watch it, and they should. But you're putting out in standard definition. Your show is beautiful. Your show is gorgeous. It is shot immensely. The, the, the cinematography is second to none. The directing is great. You are purposely putting out an inferior product. So not only are you doing that, but you're, making, you're taking the community away uh, from watching the show all together all at once. Everyone can interact with it. There's something to be said about everybody watching the show together. Again, this also kind of gets into the whole Netflix idea too, it, it, the binge watching idea that this whole this whole notion that you should be able to binge watch a television show 13 episodes all at once or you can watch you can watch all of 121 episodes of Lost at once right now this very moment on Netflix. Does that benefit the show or should you be watching it one week at a time? You should you be everybody be watching it at the same time. I'd love to get your guys thoughts on this because I'm going to tell you I'm a little disappointed in Stas for putting this show out uh, on on demand before it's actually released, especially knowing that it's in standard definition. Please contact us and let us know what you think. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Patty Davis, a big fan of your podcast. Uh, I am a reader, but not necessarily a lover of the books. Um, this episode, I thought I'd give it a mixed rating, maybe three uh, kilts. <laughs> um, I thought Lottie Burby nailed it. Her performance was fantastic. But Jamie, come on. If there, ever there was an episode where Jamie was just too, too perfect, this is it. I mean, I, I come from the future, and I need to go back to my husband, and he does me bad, and I, wrong. Just not believable. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Thanks again for a great podcast. Bye-bye. Thank you for those thoughts. i got to tell you, I'm, I'm going to have to disagree with you. I, I disagree because, like Mary said, he is from a time where it is kind of magical. It may not be out of the entire realm of possibility that he may have heard stories about this. And because of that, he may be a little bit more accepting. And again, as a married man, you have to be able to believe what your wife says. And I'm not sure if you're married, if you have a husband, it's not my, it's not my opinion. It's not my job. It's your, that's your, that's your business. But I do really feel like you should be able to tell your wife or your husband anything. Because if you can't tell your wife or your husband anything and then have them take you seriously, where is your marriage at? And I'm not speaking about you. I'm speaking just in, in general, in, in, in philosophical terms. Where is your marriage? Are you really trusting your husband? Is your husband trusting the wife? Is it, where, 
what is the definition of marriage? And I really feel like Jamie hit it on the head. Yes. Was it perfect? Is it a little hard to believe? Maybe it's possible, but I do feel like he's in love and they do have this basis of trust with each other, with each other. And I think that's where they're going to succeed as a couple. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Melissa calling from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. This is the first time I've called. I'm so excited. Um, just wanted to react to the episode last night. I absolutely loved it. I loved every part of it. I loved all of the surprises, all of the things that I knew um, were coming. I think my favorite part, uh, I want to start with the surprise. Um, the surprising part uh, I loved was um, Father Bain and how um, I was confused at first um, by what he did and, and how um, he went about what he did. Um, I didn't understand it at first, but as I've watched it, now I see that he was getting um, everyone to, to turn against Claire in a more subtle way. Um, I just liked how everything with Claire and um, Galas was handled. It was just very interesting to me, even though I've read the books and I know what happens. Um, my absolute favorite part was Jamie's reactions, um, Jamie rescuing her. Uh, I love the part of the stones. I thought that the way Sam acted was just superb. I didn't, I didn't think it was over the top. Um, it wasn't, uh, I just thought that he was letting Claire go, um, even though it was killing him, but he didn't, he didn't want her to know that is what I felt. Um, it was the hardest thing he ever had to do according to the book. And I just thought that the way it was handled was just perfect. And then his reaction when Claire came back to him um, was even more perfect. I, I can't wait till next week to see everything else that's happening. I love the show. I love what they're doing. And I love what you guys are doing. I, I, I listen to every podcast. I follow you on Twitter and Facebook, and I'm just having a blast with this. So thanks for all that you're doing. Take care. Melissa, thank you. As I always say to anybody who is either new to the podcast or someone who is a first-time caller, welcome. Welcome to the family. We are so glad that you are here and calling and engaging. It's That's the best part of this podcast. And let me say, these two voicemails right in a row are perfect examples of the Outlander community. One person thinks that Jamie, like his reaction was just unbelievable and that it, it gave it a three-kilt rating which is totally respectable. And I, and I appreciate, I love that perspective. But then we have another person right after this saying, Jamie was perfect. He, the, his reaction was right on par. It was right on the nose. They couldn't have done it better in any other way. Wow. I love you guys. I love this community. Wicked good, wicked good analysis. Thank you so much. And just, there's just the differences. It, 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 everyone has an opinion and they're all respectable and they're all appreciative. And they, it, oh. You guys rock. I'm so glad we have this voicemail system. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Laura, a.k.a. LV Prose Writer on Twitter. I never called your uh, phone number before, um, but there's so much to say about this week's show. Um, I guess my favorite moment might actually be the sex scene where it occurred to me right away that the reason Jamie only wanted to watch her is that he had already in his mind given her back to Frank. So he was going to keep a little bit more hands off uh, in his final goodbye to her. I think the most powerful moment was a lot of her beak when she takes the attention back from Jamie during the trial and starts her whole plea to save Claire and let them escape. That was also one of the most surprising moments for me because the way the whole 1968 part came out um, earlier than it does in the book and in a different way and with more emphasis on the vaccines um, earlier also, it made for more drama in the scene. And I was also thinking about how Blake was right in his outlandish prediction about uh, Galus. Um, other things I loved were uh, the way they finally got in the truth versus lies line that they dropped during the um, wedding scene. I thought it was really great the way they put it in there. It fit perfectly. Um, what else? I liked the fact that Galus... Um, her whole motivations uh, to save Claire 
was maybe more emphasized than the book, made her a little bit more sympathetic there. Uh, on the other hand, and this may be the criticism in the book too, I don't remember, um, I felt like Claire's anguish over Galus's fate um, was uh, interesting given she does know Galus is a murderer, um, but she was still, you know, sympathetic toward her, especially since she was saving her. Um, let's see. I also felt like um, maybe if I had any criticisms, I would have liked to see maybe, maybe not as much as some viewers are saying that there was not enough uh, at the end of Jamie and Claire, but maybe if they could have had about five minutes left of the trial, a little shorter testimony of somebody perhaps so that we could have had a little more Jamie and Claire at the end. And I also, I know, because I've even heard um, Ron Moore explain why they did the way they did the scene where Claire doesn't go through the stones and Jamie grabs her and they didn't want it to be too sci-fi. But I felt like um, in the book, you got the sense that he saw her start to disappear. And I understand that he doesn't need to have his Christ and doubting Thomas moment. He already believes her. But I thought it was kind of cool in the book that even though he's not a time traveler, he actually did see it about to start to happen. So anyway, I uh, hope Mary's feeling better. Um even though my kid's 17 years old, I've been thinking about you and, you know, it's going to be great. I'm, I'm looking forward to you uh, having your daughter and, you know, not having to be pregnant anymore. And uh, thanks for your podcast. I really enjoy it. Bye. Laura, thank you so much for calling in and giving us the well wishes for our daughter. Trust me, if there's anybody on this planet that is ready for this baby to come, it is me. The poor torture that Mary has gone through as it relates to this pregnancy and being sick has been awful. And I know we've made light of it uh, on the show multiple times. We've mentioned it multiple times. But trust me, it has been a real challenge. So, again, thank you so much for the well wishes. And, uh, wow, even more differing opinions um, about the sex scene. Here I am thinking that the sex scene didn't really work for me. And then you turn around and say, no, but it was perfect. It actually made sense. And it was right on. Um, and who am I? Of course, uh, I'm just I'm just a jabroni with a mic. Um, but it's it, again, I, I love the differing opinions on this show. Oh, and by the way, as I said earlier, welcome to the family. Hello, Mary and Blake. Um, this is Sarah. I'm from um, La Crescenta, California. And I wanted to call about uh, episode, um, the, the latest episode. I just have to say I am really in tears. I feel like I have just been taken on a wild roller coaster ride. And I feel so bad about hating Galus. I did not see that come in. Blake, you were right. Um, and... She has redeemed herself, and I loved that scene between the two women. At first, I thought that having the two of them having really that one-on-one -on -one in the jail was a little bit long. It felt like it was too long, but then it was necessary to build up to what happened in the courtroom. And I have to say, I have to agree with... Um, the rest of the people who want to kill Father Bane, he's just horrid, horrid, horrid character. Anyways, the second half of the episode uh, with Jamie and Claire, I can't, I am so in love with that couple now. I mean, I can totally understand why their love story has so endured. I cried and I was sobbing. And I love Jamie more. I understand why everybody loves Jamie. Who can't love Jamie? And Claire, what a strong woman. And she's such a great role model. And, you know, <laughs> um, Sam and Kat did such a great job. I think that the two of them are perfect for this role. And I cannot... Um, give Ron Moore more credit for the roller coaster ride that he's taking us show watchers on. And I'm so glad I, I have not looked and been spoiled. So thanks again. Keep up the great work. And 
oh my gosh, I can't wait until the following episode when they go to Lollybrook. So thanks again, and you guys have a great evening. Bye-bye. Sarah, thank you for calling in. You brought up a couple of g- great points. First of all, me being right. <laughs> Obviously, that's that's the most important part here. Uh, but you talked about Galus's redemption. And I think that is an intriguing idea. Did she need to be redeemed? Is it Was she deserving of being hated, like you said? I don't know. Um, and I don't know if she was deserving of needing to be redeemed. I, I think she was a character that had her own... Uh, ideas and own abilities and own agenda and she tried to fulfill them and maybe she did use claire a little bit but i i think for the most part she was relatively truthful with claire in knowing that she was different and admitting that she was different uh was she coy about it definitely but you kind of knew that she was a character that was different and I appreciated that about her. And in fact, listen, if I can swoon over Jamie in this episode, you are fully willing and able and allowed to swoon over Jamie. Because, uh, wow, man, he won me over. And I freaking hate the fact that I have to admit that I'm on the Jamie train. I hate it. I hate it. Because now I'm with everybody else. And I, oh, maybe I should just turn back. I should turn back time and just say no. No, no. The Jamie sucks. Because, God, I love being a contrarian. I love getting I love getting rises out of you guys, to be honest. Uh, but no, he... I'm on the freaking Jamie train, and this sucks to admit, but it's true. Hi, Miriam Blake. This is Kendra from Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, calling in about uh, episode 11, uh, The Devil's Mark. I really, really, really enjoyed this episode. Um, there were things, of course, that um, I might have done a little bit differently. But as far as the back half of the season, I think this was the strongest episode back. Um, they had a lot to accomplish. Honestly, I think they could have done two episodes out of this one. Uh, the first being the witch trial itself um, in the book. The Thieves' Hole, um, that... Uh, that time in the thieves hole with Galus and Claire uh, was much longer. There were um, there were deeper revelations, and you get a little bit more of Galus' story. And I think um, the way Lottie played it, um, just the the masterful uh, um, acting that that she displayed there, she deserved the full episode. She really did. Um, but that that itself, um, the witch trial, should have been its own episode. And then. Um, Jamie and Claire, uh, Claire's revelation to Jamie, um, and then they're, they're traveling to, uh, Craig and Dune. That could have been a whole separate episode. I really would have loved to have more time spent, um, with Claire at the Stones. Um, I, I think that she had a very nice moment. I mean, um, Kitchena really, had a nice acting moment. They managed to do that full sequence without uh, voiceover breaking in, and I'm impressed that they did that. Um, I wasn't expecting them to do it without voiceover, so I, I was um, pleasantly surprised. But I thought um, we could have maybe had um, flashbacks where, you know, we could have drawn that out a bit more, but I, I was really impressed with it as a, on a whole. Um in regards to some of the imagery um, that was used, uh, the starlings at the beginning and how they touched upon the, star- the starlings throughout the episode, um, it made me think about Hannibal and where uh, when Hannibal is telling Clarice, um, you know, about starlings and how there are shallow rollers and deep rollers and how deep rollers, if they're, if they're, parents, if one is a shallow roller and one is a deep roller, then the offspring will be okay. But if there are two deep rollers that breed, then the uh, offspring will die because they, you know, they spiral all the way down um, and don't make the turn up in time. And I think I could not get my mind off of that imagery when they were talking about starlings. And so um, I really think that that was purposeful. And I do see both Claire and Galus uh, would be classified as deep rollers. Um, neither of them think before acting. Um, while Galus seems to be a bit more calculated, uh, look at what she did for her cause. You know, both of them, um, you know, Galus charged ahead knowing exactly what 
was going to happen when she went through the stones. Um, and Claire, no matter what situation she's in, she never thinks about consequences before, before she acts. And so I think that was um, a very poignant and very purposeful imagery, um, and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, what I thought they could have done um, better was in regards to the revelation with Jamie, I thought, um, you know, Jamie is in love with Claire. Uh, he is very trusting of Claire. But one of the things that we have to remember that is so um, – that is such a defining characteristic of Jamie is that he is rational in a time of irrationality. And so Jamie automatically saying, of course I believe you. In the book, it is played out a little differently where um, he has doubts. He doesn't doubt that – he doesn't think she's lying. He thinks that there's – he thinks that she is having delusions and um, doesn't know quite for sure until they wind up at the stones. Um, and he sees her semi vanish when she touches the stone. Um, I really uh, would have liked to see that because it would have further instilled my my trust in Jamie as a rational person in an irrational time. Um, but the rest of uh, the rest of how they played it out and and the transition from the book to the to the show, I was very very impressed with. As far as the acting is concerned, it was some of the best of the entire series. Um, the relationship between Claire, Claire and Galas was wonderful and nuanced and, in my opinion, was the most touching personal relationship that they have shown throughout the series, and that includes Jamie and Claire. So that bonding um, between... Um, Gillis and Claire, when they realize just how alike they are, their circumstances have lined up, um, and they've really been gifted with each other at what could be their end. And I, I really, really um, appreciated that, and I loved how gently that relationship was um, was treated, you know, even considering, um, no spoilers, but even considering how things play out in future books. Um, so, Anyway, that was my opinion of the episode. I thought it was wonderful. There were some things I would have done differently, um, but it was an extraordinarily strong episode. Um, I think it would be uh, the second best episode to me um, after Garrison Commander. Anyway, thank you so much. Uh, I love what you guys do and eager to hear the cast. Bye. Kendra, as always, thank you so much for the wonderful analysis that you've done. There are two things that you said there that I really like. First, you talked about the imagery from the movie Hannibal, the great Ridley Scott movie of from the year 2001, all about Hannibal Lecter. And what a fantastic connection that I, I didn't even make. And Hannibal is probably in my top 10 favorite movies of all time about the starlings uh, having deep rollers and shallow rollers. And if bo two deep rollers come together, they both hit and die. And you are 100% right about Galus and Claire. They are both deep rollers. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the movie, there, he's talking about the birds going up and then coming back down uh, and coming da back down to earth. The, a deep roller goes really deep and a shallow roller only goes so far uh, closer to the ground. So wonderful stuff. And the other thing is the garrison commander it is your favorite episode and girl you are after you are a woman after my own heart luckily i married to the most beautiful woman i've ever met in my life because otherwise we could have a conversation because the garrison commander is in fact my favorite episode of outlander as well so thank you so much for that wonderful analysis hello my name is laura and i'm from california after last night's episode i'm literally wrecked i cried the whole time i must say the feels were way too much in this episode I'm excited to see how the next episode goes. So, bye. Laura, I got to admit, I cried a little bit myself. Uh, so there's no shame in that. There is absolutely no shame, just like Cram Jamie cr cried too. Uh... Wow, a very powerful episode. Ugh, I just, it was really, really freaking good. It was awesome. I loved it. All right, guys, thank you so much for calling in. I love the voicemails as always. But now it is time for the Tweet of the Week. Megan McConville, you have the tweet of the week. Woohoo! Congratulations! And what she said was, now that's the kind of episode that's going to send Mary 
into labor. Hashtag Outlander baby. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, I'm kind of upset because this would have been a perfect episode to watch while I was laboring to get my mind off of everything. Yes, it was. Good. Call Megan. We're just going to have to save it. <laughs> We're going to pull it up on the playlist. So I think it was at Mama Raven was her actual Twitter handle. Uh, yes. But Megan McConville, you are this week's Tweet of the Week. And as a bonus, so you all remember... The Tweet of the Week winner every single week will get a $20 gift card from the Tag Your It Etsy shop. Woohoo! Go get yourself some cool Outlander swag. So, as always, congratulations on being this week's Tweet of the Week. All right, my love. What do you think? You think it's time for the Outlander Theory of the Week? Yes, of course. I can't wait to see what stuff you've come up with. All right, let's do it. Here we go. This Outlandish Theory of the Week is brought to you by the Whispers in the Glen Etsy shop. Please check them out to see all of their spectacular Outlander-inspired wear, including those fingerless gloves that Claire wore. Be sure to use the Outlander Cast coupon code to receive 15% off. And that cu- coupon code is, in fact, Outlander Cast. All one word. Yes. All right. So... The Outlandish Theory of the Week. You ready? Uh, bring it, baby, because a few of yours did come true. Mm-hmm. A few of yours I have to keep mom about, so I'm just going <laughs> to look away. What do you got for us this week? I think that Claire did go back to the future. Back to the future. <laughs> <laughs> she did go. She went back into the 40s and realized that her time with Frank was not way, the way it should have been. It, it just She realized that she needed to be with Jamie. And she came back to Craig and Dune, hit the rocks, and the rocks put her right back at that time where she knew she was at that, that pivotal moment of her life in Scotland, which was Jamie waiting for her. Hmm. So another episode you're going to see is... In Claire, your opinion. In, 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 well, this is the outlandish theory yeah, of the week. in your outlandish theory, you think what? Another episode you're going to see is Claire in the 1940s. And it's going to be her interacting with Frank and everything and realizing that her life just sucks. Oh, it's my life sucks <laughs> without you. Oh, man. So that is my outlandish theory of the week. What do you think, kid? Um, I think it's interesting. <laughs> I can't believe you're doing that to me again. I can't believe I have to sit through these outlandish theories without <gasps> actually commenting. Oh, my God. That is awful. No. You just made fun of my outlandish theories no, of the week. I'm saying without commenting. That's oh. the hard part. Okay. All right. All right. Fine, kid. What do you say? Uh, we close out the show. Yes. All right. But before we close out the show, as a reminder, this episode of Outlander Cast is brought to you by the Tag Your It Etsy shop. From Outlander-inspired necklaces and rings to custom designs, for birthdays, Mother's Day, yes, Mary, <coughs> I know, Day. again, I get it, Mother's Day is coming up, and I do, in fact, have a nice gift for you, yes, it's true. Every piece is created by Don, one letter at a time, so that each piece is, in fact, one of a kind. So, please take the time to visit Don, the owner, at www.tagurit.biz, that's B-I-Z. Tell her and Mary Blake sent you, and use the coupon code OUTLANDERCAST15 for 15% off of any purchase. And as always, Mary, what am I going to say? Tag your mama, tag your pet, tag your it. Whatever it is. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Outlander Cast. We love to interact with you. I've been so sick for a month that you guys have literally been like my only friends uh, that I've been able to interact with. So keep it up. Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr. Our handle is Outlander Cast. And you can also head on over to OutlanderCast.com. You can chat with us under discussion forums there. Let us know more about what you think. And if you are not in iTunes, subscriber or if you don't have iTunes you can listen to all the podcasts there so help spread the outcast outlander cast love with your non iTunes friends by just sending them to that website while you're there check out the Mary and Blake store get yourself some cool swag some some cool outlander themed shirts to wear while you watch the show and we're also in love with the email machine so you can get us at outlandercast@gmail.com 
and we love to hear your voices. Got to hear a few of you this week. Our hotline is 1-503-454-6730. And if you're looking for another way to support Outlander Cast, please hit the Support Us tab at the top of our website and click on our Patreon page. Patreon, you can give us a dollar, two dollars, one hundred and twenty-five dollars for all I care. We would be glad and honored to accept anything you would be able to give to us to help keep this show written, produced, and performed. It'd be a great help to all of us. So please help us out with that. Once again, everyone, thank you for tuning in to Outlander Cast. My name is Mary, and I'm Blake, and we'll be talking with you soon. Mm-hmm.